What do you want? A show that plays only Bruce Springsteen. Huh? Nothing but Springsteen. <laughs> That's your idea. Bruce has a lot to say to students in this college. How will they know there's something better out there if they don't hear it? My job is to play music that the students will connect to. Yeah, that means bros. That means curiosity. And yes, that even means Debbie Gibson. But Springsteen, he's more what your dad listens to. Not my dad. Can you do that? Make it look now. Shit like that? Yeah. Do you want to play it anyway? Sure. Do you want me to yeah. sing along? No. No. It's not clear. Can I see that bit? Don't like Stand there and speak to him. Right. I don't know what. What do you want to do? Can I talk about headphones? It's good. said that she's a witch. Yeah. So and then she'll go, yes. <laughs> she's going to LSE. Yes. <laughs> I think one of you should get in the car, you get in the car, right? So I can see you through the car looking like that. Wait, you haven't had some more experience. You have to do it as if it's totally fresh. Okay. Dad, Jay's been looking for a Saturday job. Can you help him now? And cut. <laughs> He's actually the bald guy. <laughs> the wind blow back. Stay with it.
Oh my god, it's awesome! <laughs> Okay, and cut. Cut there. Films about people who are generally on the margins of society, people who you would see on the edges of frames or not in the frame, and then I take them and put them in the centre of the frame and say, let's see the world from this perspective. And the same is true of Blinded by the Light, and that's, I think, Bruce's mission in many ways. You know, his songs are about the people who have built the countries, you know, have have worked in the factories, who have, um, you know, uh, given their life and blood to wars uh, for their country, and are generally overlooked in the, in the in the building and success of that com country. I first met Safraz when he had written an article about Bruce Springsteen in a paper. Um, and I was like, wow, here's another Asian person who likes Springsteen. That's really unusual. And so we connected because of our love of Springsteen. And it was only years later that he said, I think I'm going to write a book about my life and Springsteen. And I was like, okay, that sounds good. Well, let me have a look at it when you're done. And that's exactly what happened. It was a way of using the music and using the words exactly how I wanted to, which was not in a jukebox kind of way, but in a, in a way that was in, endemic to the story that I was telling, and how when you, as a young person, are feeling disenfranchised, uh, when you hear the music that speaks to you, what that feels like, it makes your life change, and you find yourself listening to those songs over and over again and those words over again and you might not know why at the time but there's something that is utterly relatable to you. Where I'm coming from is that this is a universal film with universal themes told in a way that will move you and make you feel very good about yourself and your world because it's extremely relatable. It just so happens to be set in Luton, you know, and the story of a Pakistani kid. But actually, when you go and see it, it's your story too. And that's what I try and do as a filmmaker, you know, make universal stories. They're just with people who you might not think you relate to, but actually you do. What we managed to do together was really craft a performance that feels, you know, very nuanced and very emotional. And I think that a lot of that comes from his natural ability, you know, to, to emote in a very understated way. I was invited to the premiere of The Promise and Bruce was coming. And so I took Safraz as my plus one and we both stood on the red carpet on either side um, as Bruce approached. We weren't quite sure how we were going to get to him, but that was our mission that day. As he approached, we both stood with our cameras ready to take pictures of each other. But an amazing thing happened. As he walked towards us, he saw Safraz 
whom he recognised from having seen him about 100 times in concert. And there aren't many Pakistanis with afros in the front row of Bruce concerts. So he recognised him, he walked over. I came running over with my camera and he said, I read your book, it's really beautiful. Safraz then started hyperventilating and going, oh my God, you read it? You took the time to read it? How did you get it? And Bruce said, someone sent it to me and I read it. And I thought this is the moment. And we both said, well, we really want to make a film. I made Bender like Beckham. Please, can, we, can you help us? Can we have your permission? And Bruce kind of looked at us both and said, sounds good. As the movie finished, nobody said anything because everyone was waiting for what Bruce was going to say. So I was like, it's silent. No one's saying anything. It wasn't even a clap or anything. It was nothing. So I got up and went to the front to turn the lights on. And as I turned around, Bruce got up, walked over to me, gave me a big kiss here and a hug and said, Thank you for looking after me so beautifully. You look at him as the baddie, if you want. Simple as that. Because I'm objecting against Bruce Springsteen, uh, where I think where uh, my son is wasting time, where he should be more academically minded and think of getting a better job, a proper job, a real job. Uh, so in that sense, I think he could be, be looked as the protagonist in, in that sense. Watching her work, it's like really watching a filmmaker. The intensity in her um, viewing is immense. I just see her looking at detail after detail after detail and really wanting to make film and a quality and type of film, which gives me a great joy to understand somebody who's committed so much to film. So it's been fantastic. It's the story. Wanting to tell this story, not only about uh, a boy of coming of age, but an immigrant coming here at that particular time and having to deal with the situation that was happening around the country. We don't realize it then when we are in the moment, but hence you walk away and you look back and you do see what, what we were in delving with and what my fathers were actually dealing with, you know, trying to get a trying to find work and trying to keep a family afloat. Um, there's bit, all these things come across. Um, but what makes it unique as well, I think there's a, there's a unique way that Gurinder is telling this story, using music in itself. I'm not saying that it's a musical, but it's not just a drama either. It's a great fusion of... Um, of telling the story of these cultures, uh, of this kind of two genres being she brought together. She's very cool. She's political. She's very like aware of everything that's going on um, politically. And she's very, very angry about most of it because um, she's very left wing. She's very anti Thatcher. And Thatcher just got her like third term, I think. So there's that aspect, which is really fun to play about her. She's also um, quite sweet though. I mean, her main part in the film is to be Javed's girlfriend and to, like, help him develop as a character. So it's very much like you've got those two aspects that you need to bring out, which are very opposite. Well, the resonance that the script has with me um, is probably, for the most part, in, like, terms of Eliza's bits. The, um, the politics. Uh, she goes on marches all the time. She's very, I go on marches all the time. <laughs> um, she's just angry at everyone, which I think I spent most of my teenage years being. Um, but obviously also the growing up as well, the growing up aspect and finding like your first love. I think maybe not Eliza's first love, but Javed's first love is definitely um, Eliza. I had a listen and I was like, nice, this is cool. And then as it went on, as the filming went on, we listened to more music. Like Vivek made a playlist of just his songs that he would listen to all the time. And because we listened to him so much, like the more and more that we listened to him, 
the more you sort of fall in love with him. And now it's going to be really sad not listening to his music all the time. I love, yeah, I'm, I have to say I'm now a fan of Bruce. <laughs> Being surrounded by so many people wearing clothes from the 80s was <laughs> one of the most surreal experiences. Seeing, um, seeing di the director, Gorinda, was the best, I think, in a massive wig. Um, it was just so much fun. And the scenes for Born to Run when we are in Luton um, doing a scene in the town hall when everyone's dancing and there's a Michael Jackson dancer, that was just amazing. The main character's Javed and he comes from Pakistan. His family have moved from Pakistan to Luton where he grows up. And um, it's about the racism he encounters. It's about the cultural friction between his family and the society he's growing up in and it's about him finding love for the first time and how music and Bruce Springsteen like his absolute love has helped him go on this At great first I was literally forcing myself to to listen to his music because it's completely out of what I would usually listen to um, but the more I listened to him because I did force myself at first it was, it's nothing like what I would usually listen to and after a while, I, I actually started enjoying his music. And over a year since we filmed, filmed uh, since we shot the film, I still listen to his music. I got, the day that his album came out on Spotify, I downloaded it. So now I would actually consider myself a fan. The Roots is a uh, he's a he's a sixth form student. He's a he's a very confident guy. He he has this. He's just full of life. Even when everyone around him is just down, he can, he has he has this aura to kind of uplift everyone else, and he is who introduces Javid to Bruce Springsteen, and um, so when when obviously they when he gets him into it, they start listening to the music together. It's not just about the the, the music dyna dynamic. It's 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 not a it's not a musical where the film's based around the music. It's a story about how how a young lad has to go through so much and gets uplifted by music and whether you're a Springsteen fan or not you can you can relate to that to some extent because everyone's been inspired by music at some point I would just say it's a feel-good film and and I feel like I don't even know if this still to this day I don't know if it's a biased opinion but I feel like there are so many waves of emotions that you feel throughout the film that I haven't felt with majority of films that I've watched. And I feel like at some point you'll be laughing out loud and another point you'll be crying, you'll look around and everyone's, everyone's eyes are filled she with tears. an English teacher who um, sees something kind of special in Javed and encourages him. She's very bossy, <laughs> which um, I quite like. I quite like working with strong women um i like she's unapologetic so she knows what she wants and you just feel that you've all you know she's steering you into uh into a good place I mean, she's very honest cut and dry to the point so you know that when she's happy with it she's happy with it and she'll move on but she won't um you're in safe hands she's not gonna you're not gonna do a bad take and she'll she she won't say anything. She'll just go, no, no, that we're doing something else here. So I, you know, I appreciate her honesty. And I think she's, uh, you know, this story means a lot to her. And so, um, and you can see that she's very passionate about it. And I really enjoyed reading it. And I thought it was a lovely, lovely character without her being sentimental. That's the thing that I kind of liked about Ben and Beckham. There's something that's kind of bittersweet about it sometimes, but ultimately it's not too saccharine, you know? Um, so there's a, there's enough humour in it, which so it doesn't take itself too seriously. For me, it's about escape. Um, and Javid wants to escape from Luton, essentially. Um, escape and family. Um, because as much as, as much as, you know, it's about his relationships with his friends and, and his family, the main, um, relationship is the relationship with his dad um, and that is what Safraz's book was sort of about really is about his relationship with his dad and I think that's the most important and it sort of goes full circle from 
him sort of not hating his dad, but just being aware of the fact that his dad was holding him back and not allowing him to do things. I'd never really listened to Bruce Springsteen um, before this. I'd, I'd heard of him, um, but I'd never really listened. And I started and I was like, hmm, I'm not sure. And then I carried on listening and I carried on listening just like the character does. It's weird, it was an epi epiphany-like moment. Um, and, and his words, to me, have a lot more depth to them than, than a, a top 40 song. Not to discredit any of that, but I started trying to listen to top 40 music after listening to Bruce. And I couldn't <laughs> because I didn't feel like the words had depth to them or as much depth depth to them as he as he gives them in his songs. I'm really glad that we didn't do it all in a um all sort of studio and um and we actually went to, to the place um and not to somewhere else. Oh look fly. Um yeah, it's nice that we went to the place because um I think it matters. Um, and Safraz, lovely Safraz, took um, myself and Aaron and he took me around and he showed me his first house there um, before we started shooting, his first house there and his second house there. And then we went and ate and then we walked around and and it was really cool to get to see that before we started um, because it puts everything into perspective. I'd walk into set and people would have the craziest outfits, like yeah. um, all the lovely hair and makeup people sort out. Um, like mental. I never thought things could be done with hair um, that were done. Um, I don't know what it's called. What it's called? A like flock of flock of seagulls. Is that what it's called? Flock of seagulls. And a couple of guys had that hairstyle where it's like. It was just up on the sides and then sort of down on the floor. <laughs> and I saw it and I was just like, bloody hell. That's when you realise that you're in a sort of 80s world. And it was mad. I don't think there has been another film with a... I, th I just don't think there's been a film that you could go set in 1980s in Luton about a Muslim boy who falls in love with the music of Bruce Springsteen. I think that is, it sounds like almost, I don't know, it's just otherworldly almost. Like I never thought a film could be made about something like that. What Springsteen did was firstly give me a sense of hope because Springsteen grew up in a working class industrial town. He managed to get out. So there was a, there was a glimmer of hope there. But the other thing that Springsteen did was that his music was American music and he articulated a version of American patriotism and an idea of America that was just really, really infectious. I guess what it was for me was that his music were like, was like a set of instructions and they were like a route map. And it was a route map that if you could follow these instructions, you'd be a wiser person than you are now. You'd probably have a better relationship with your dad. You might possibly be more empathetic. You might possibly know a little bit more about what is, what is um, how to be a good human being. And you might have a better road or a better chance to get out of the life you've got. That wasn't just one song, that was a body of work. How do you think it feels? It's like the most crazy, crazy thing in the world to have somebody whose music has utterly defined and shaped you and who you've, you know, who you love, tell you that he has spent time reading your story and appreciate something that you've created. That is an absolutely insane feeling. I think I met Gorinda at some event, some sort of filmy event or something like that. And obviously I knew her work and she's a big, she's a big character in terms of the British Asian scene, but also just as a filmmaker. And for some reason we must have started talking about Springsteen and she mentioned that she was a fan as well. And 
I think I was writing the book at the time. It was around about that time. So I got in touch with her. I told her that I'm working on the book. And then so I started having a conversation with her even as I was writing the book. And in my head, you know, these are crazy dreams. But in my head, I was thinking, you know, kid from a Pakistani background, loves an unlikely hero, helps change his life. You know, it's not a world away from Bender like Beckham. It's the sort of thing that could possibly make a film. I had no idea how to do it, but you know. And so I kept in touch with her. And then when the book was ready, I sent it to her. And that's how the kind of conversation, that's how the conversation began. We wanted Springsteen's music to be a character in the film. We wanted the songs to be a character. We didn't want it to be background. It wasn't going to be just, here's a jukebox of all the greatest hits. Some of the songs are quite obscure. And we wanted it to be a character, and we also wanted it to illuminate and push the narrative along. So that was the starting point. So every song is there for a reason. And I think Gorinda's genius is that she takes subjects which some people might consider to be niche and hammers home the humanity and the universality of them. I think that's what she's really, really strong at. I think it's that universality of people who want to do something meaningful or different in their life, but feeling that for whatever reason, either the way they grew up or because of their family, it, it challenged them. I think that's part of it. And I think the final reason is because I think it's a film which has got a lot of hope in it. It suggests that you can grow up in a pretty unpromising place and end up in a better place. And it's because of the power of words and music and art. And I think that idea of hope, that there is a better way out there, I think that's something that's... Futureprevews.com Go behind the scenes of movies. Subscribe to Future Flicks' YouTube channel.